Let's execute some exercises here from tracing recursion worksheet number one. Uh, we have a recursive method, sum. You see it calls itself. Let's see what happens when we call sum with the parameter five. So in the first stack frame, stack frame number one, uh, you don't really have to label it this way in your notes, but I'd like to. Um, we have sum equals five, and uh, that is equal to whatever happens when, well, if n is five, this if statement is false, therefore this executes, therefore a five uh, is being added to the sum of whatever, whatever you get when you take five minus one. Uh, that simplifies in turn to five plus the sum of four, and we, we don't know what that is. We can't simplify this any further, therefore we don't know what value to return, and therefore we have to drill down into another stack frame. So stack frame number one is what you have uh, uh, when you write it out as 5 plus the sum of 4. Sum of 5 is equivalent to 5 plus the sum of 4. And uh, in order to uh, simplify that to a final answer, we have to execute uh, sum of 4. We have to call sum with the value of 4 for the parameter n. So let's check that out. If 4 is passed in for n, again we have a false. So we execute whatever's in the, the else. So we have a 4 plus the sum of 4 minus 1, which simplifies of course to 3. And therefore, I can, I can uh, substitute the, this sum of 4 for 4 plus the sum of 3. Now this 5 plus is still up here in stack frame number 1 waiting to be added to the sum of 4. All of this uh, uh, is equivalent to this and this 5 plus is still hanging along for the ride if, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, rewriting this to just to, to be neat. Okay, so now we uh, drill down into stack frame number three, where the parameter uh, n is three. So let's proceed with that stack frame. n is three. This if statement is false. Therefore, we have three plus the sum of whatever three minus one is. That's 2. So this sum of 3 can be rewritten as the sum of sum plus 2. I, liked, I like to rewrite all of these previous parts from the previous stack frames. Do not simplify this and change this to 9, for example. Do not simplify and change this 5 plus 4 plus 3 to, uh, to 12. Sometimes that uh, gets you into trouble. And uh, this is just a, a very neat methodical way to, to uh, trace these kinds of recursive methods. So we now go further down into stack frame number four, where we have to evaluate the sum of two, n is two. Again, we go down into this recursive case, two plus the sum of two minus one, that simplifies to one. So the sum of two over here is rewritten as two plus the sum of one. Rewriting everything else to make sure we don't miss anything. We now drill down into stack frame number five. And uh, sum of one uh, is, has to be traced or executed. And n is one. And lo and behold, we finally hit what's called the base case. We don't do the recursive case anymore because n is indeed equal to 1, therefore this is true, and we return 1. So this 1 is returned and plug, plugs in for the call sum of 1. And everything else should be rewritten just to play it safe. And what happens is this 1 drills back up into uh, stack frame 2 where the 1 is added to the 2 for a grand total of 3 
That three plugs into this stack frame, stack frame three, where that three is added to that three for a grand total of six so far. That six adds up to the four which to make a grand total of 10. And that 10 bubbles back up into stack frame number one. And that 10 plus that five is 15. Or you can just uh, add a cross, if you will, uh, in the stack frame number five, the way I wrote it out. Five plus four plus nine, or plus three plus two plus one is indeed equal to 15, and that is the answer to this question. The sum of 5 is equal to 15. Okay, I'm going to continue with exercise number 2. I'm not, go I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's very, very similar to exercise 1. Notice it's pretty much the same setup. If else, we have one parameter n. n equals 1 is even the same, but instead of n plus, we have 2 times. So uh, I'll get you started on this one. And what do we have? We have a result of five. That's what we have to execute. So in stack frame number one, uh, we have the result. I'm just going to abbreviate that as R instead of result. The R of five is equal to what? Well, it's equal to two times a result of n minus one. And n currently is five. Five minus one is four. So we rewrite it like that. Stack frame number two. I want to evaluate the R of 4. Well, the R of 4, if 4 is plugged in for n, that means uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. So this part right here is rewritten as 2 times the R of 3. This 2 times pulls along for the ride. And we drill down now into stack frame number 3. Stack frame number 3 finds that the parameter n is equal to 3. Therefore, we hit this uh, recursive case. 3 minus 1 is 2. So this gets rewritten as 2 times the R of 2. So, so far, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times the R of 2. And we're in stack frame number 3. Whether you care or not, I don't know um, how many, you might not care how many stack frames we, we have to drill down into. I'll let you uh, take it from there. Eventually, the number 2 is going to plug in for one of these recursive cases and you're going to just be multiplying two times two times a whole lot of times. Good luck with that one. I'm not going to finish that one out for you. Moving down to exercise three on this worksheet. We have this function, a recursive function, a recursive method that has three parameters. Interesting. Let's uh, check it out. The M mystery of three comma two comma six. In stack frame one, Oh, I have to be careful here. The mystery of 3, 2, 6 can be rewritten as, well, n, which is 3, uh, this here 3 plugs in for the n, that is not 1, so we don't hit the uh, base case yet. We return d plus, well, d is 6 at this moment, and therefore we rewrite this as 6 plus the mystery of n minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, so 2 is the first parameter, and a and d come along for the ride, so the 2 and the 6 plug in here unchanged as parameters, and that's that. Now we have to simplify for stack frame number 2. Uh, we have to simplify all this. What's the m of 2 comma 2 comma 6? Well, uh, let's, let's be careful with our scratch work here. It'll be easy to get mixed up you're not careful with three parameters. Two plugs in for n, two plugs in for a, and six plugs in for d. Well, we don't hit the base case uh, again. That We skip over that because it's false. And we hit this, which is a d plus. Well, again, it's six plus um, the mystery of n minus one. So two minus one is one. And the two and the six come along unchanged for the ride. This one is kind of odd, but it is what it is. Stack frame number three, we end up having the n is one, and we do hit the base case, because the base case is simply uh, what we get when we have n equals one. And right now, this parameter n plugs in as one, and the two and the six do plug in yet again for a and d. So a gets returned when we hit this base case. A, which is two, 
plugs in for all of this. Rewriting everything else carefully, we have the final answer of, well, it's pretty easy to evaluate, 14. So the answer here is all of this simplifies to 14. Um, that's not any more interesting than that. Number four on this worksheet. Now this is a tricky one. Here we have a recursive method with two parameters, the function of the method f, f in stack frame one, the f of six comma eight. What's that equal to? Well, is n equal to k? Is six equal to eight? Nope. So we have to do this else. Is n greater than k? Yes, eight is greater than six. So we execute this, which means we have to evaluate what f times the k comma n minus k is. Well, k is currently 6, and n minus k, 8 minus 6, is 2. So 6 comma 2, the f of 6 comma 2. Let's rewrite that carefully. Now that's weird. The f of 6 comma 8 is equal to the f of 6 comma 2. Oh well, let's uh, proceed to stack frame number 2. What's the f of 6 comma 2? Erasing my scratch work from the previous stack frame. Um, 6 comma 2. So plug a 6 in for k, plug a 2 in for that second parameter. Are they equal? No. 6 is not equal to 2. Is n greater than k? No. 2 is not greater than 6. So we hit this return statement this time around. Evaluate closely here. Be careful. What's the f of k minus n comma n? Well, k minus n is 4, and n is 2, so all of this simplifies as the f of 4 comma 2. Notice that in this exercise, there's none of this 6 plus, 6 plus, or 2 plus, 2 plus, like we saw in some of the uh, earlier exercises. Oh well, it is what it is. So uh, now what do I have to do? Well, I'm down here in stack frame number 3 now. And what's the f of 4 comma 2? Now, proceed carefully here. Make sure that you don't uh, uh, get off track. 4 comma 2. Are they equal? No. So is n greater than k? No, it's not. So again, we hit this case. Uh, the f of k minus n, which is 2, comma n, which is 2. Now we hit stack frame number four, if you're counting, where both parameters are two, and therefore we do hit the base case. The base case is when n equals k. The base case is the case where you do not call the method as part of the return statement. In this case, you return k, which is two. So two gets returned and plugs in for this which is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to the original expression. That's it. The answer is 2. I wish I had known that, uh, all of this simplified to that, because I could have saved a lot of time, but um, it is what it is.